knows, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, thanks for turning it over. Um, I know we're, we have a couple people already on the line here. Um, looks like we're having a couple more people join here shortly. So um, as we're getting people trickled in, we just want to kind of let everybody know um, today, Lance and his lovely wife, Jesse are at the uh, Montana community get together. So they are obviously posting a lot of videos. If you guys haven't been following Lance and Jesse, they, they've been um, kind of posting their um, trip and what are the, you know, the things that they've been learning. So we might have a potential surprise guest joining us from the community camp. So that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping um, Lance can pull some, some magic strings there on, on his connections and get us uh, somebody um, that will uh, eventually surprise us. So we're excited about that. We're kind of crossing our fingers that that happens. Uh, but if it doesn't, you know, we're definitely here to have a conversation about anything that's on your mind. If you got deals that you're working on, deals that you need partnering on, whether you need help closing deals, help dispoing deals, helping locking up deals, um, whether it's single family, multifamily, whatever the case may be, you know, definitely what we we're kind of targeting is kind of a, a Q and A. We don't have a specific talk topic in mind, uh, just because again we were waiting for uh, Lance here to see who he can get to to join us. Um, so with that said, anybody want to drop any questions or anything that they're working on or anything that's a pain point? I think Jennifer's oh, saying something, but she's muted. muted. Here, I'm muted. Yeah, let's, uh, I'll get, I'll get you unmuted here. Okay. There we go. There we Hi, go. Jennifer. Hi. How you doing? So I'm just I'm just confused which one I should go to because I thought that Uncle Lonzo was there. So, um, so wholesalers mastermind, like, is like which one are we supposed to? Which one's better to go to? I don't know. Well, you know, I guess it really depends on what you're going to be targeting, right? Because if it's wholesalers mastermind, I, you know, obviously they're going to be talking a lot about wholesaling, um, specifically and. You know, here in our group, the one thing that we bring to the table is is a, a variety, right? Um, we we do bring a, an option to actually talk about um, more than just wholesaling. We talk about you know uh, sub twos, seller finance deals. Um, we even can get into uh, uh, wholesale if we want to discuss that as well. Exit strategies, innovations, all of that good stuff. Um, you know, we have experience uh, with those transactions, so we can certainly answer questions there. Do you guys do yeah, this so every week? Just to keep, sorry, just to keep in mind, um, you know, obviously last week we had Kyle Frizzell on about the Morgan method, but you have um, actually, you know, four of us, myself, uh, Damon, Juan, uh, Justin, A.B., and Lance Regan that are all in here. Um, you know, Juan runs a wholesaling business uh, of his own. Um, I am a real estate agent and an investor. I've been doing this for, I'd like to think a long time now. Um, I've got quite, quite a bit of experience, uh, in terms of real estate and I do everything from novation agreements, uh, executory contracts. Um, I mean, you name it, right. Sub to, uh, seller finance. I, I think I've done just about everything under the sun at this point to include buying businesses. Um, Lance uh, as well, uh, and, and buying businesses creatively, right? Much like Pace is talking about. And then Lance as well, right? He's kind of a starting and a budding buyer. I think like, you know, they just purchased a, a trailer park. Um, we're actually in the throes of purchasing a multifamily uh, right now. And then that would bring up Justin. He is an absolute whiz in the multifamily space. Um, he can underwrite deals like nobody I've seen, right? He has he has full pro formas uh, to be able to do those. So I think what I'm getting at is we like to think that we can answer just about any question that you might have from structuring deals to getting them under contract. And then we try to bring content, you know, like whenever Lance is at community camp, 
and try to bring on somebody that maybe people weren't expecting, right? Or just kind of show you how that sub two community might interact at one of these special events. So do you guys do this Zoom every week? Every single week, we yeah. Because I, I found this like in the community camp, like there was a community camp thing, like it was a one-off. Yeah, that may be, right? Because me and Lance, I came up with that idea last minute um, when we were discussing, you know, what we wanted to do for the week. And I was like, well, you are heading to community camp. So, you know, why don't we um, try to get you on if you're there? I think people would like to at least see what that looks like, right? And I actually Great. just got done with him on here. He was on the bus with a bunch of people heading over to Jerry Norton's house. So they have, I have been on with Lance periodically uh, during the day to day. He's been taking some video. And so there was a bunch of networking going on with just the sub two community. And I think now uh, you're gonna see a mixture of Vina's community sub two you know, uh, uh, some people from Abraham's community, and they're all going to kind of come together at Jerry's house and hang out and network for the night, right? But at the end of the day, I know Lanza. Um, he's got a cool system for wholesaling, um, I think, right? He's kind of got his own way that he goes about doing that. But I don't know, right? I like to think of wholesaling as it wholesaling is wholesaling, right? I mean, <laughs> you, you get the house, you get the contract, you assign that thing and you try to get it sold, right? And there are some things in between, but um, I can tell you pretty assuredly that you won't come across a deal that Juan can't take care of. Um, I have actually called Juan on more than a couple of occasions. And I think we're actually in the midst of working on a wholesale deal uh, together uh, in Abilene, which, I think we've come up with the fact that we are just going to wholesale that, but there was an ability to wrap it or whatever it may be there, right? So, but, but everyone yeah. Everyone wants I mean, Texas. Oh, you know, everybody wants Texas. I think everybody wants, you know, right now, everybody wants conservative states. I mean, if I, if I think that through, right, they, they want landlord friendly states and it's not about the politics right i i don't care too much about that um i just i as an investor have to have the ability to be a landlord and if i'm in a state where they make that difficult it's not appealing to me right however i mean i will say and me and justin were talking about this today that california is a great state to do Morby methods in, right? Because of the high cost of the houses. Um, but so where are you at? Oh, you're on mute. I'm in, I'm in San Antonio. Okay, all right. So you like Texas too. You're right down the road well, from Well, yeah, I mean, I, I really only stay here because, um, you know, I know this market and I, I know the LA market too, but it's just so high priced. So, you know, San Antonio is really affordable still, but I, I see constantly people are just buying all over Texas. Yeah. yeah. And San Antonio, San Antonio is a great um, buy and hold it's, market. Great yeah. buy and hold. Uh, so That's traditionally we, we, we lock up deals there. Um, we like to look at those as, as buy and holds. Um, wraps are great down there as well. So, I mean, definitely, I, I, I think San Antonio is a great market. You're right. Yeah, and I think, you know, add to that one, like, <sighs> wraps or anywhere in Texas, right? Um, I, I will wrap houses anywhere in Texas. And, um, especially working with Seshker, uh they're phenomenal at putting together wraps and really it just comes down to finding your buyer right and I, I i love san antonio for that because of the um really predominant hispanic uh, population there um the hispanic population you know they they tend to and i'm not generalizing but you know they tend to be in those blue collar jobs uh, construction things like that you know, 
but but loaning may be an issue for them, but they're heavy in cash because they own big construction companies uh, that they can afford that stuff, right? So <laughs> they'll pull hundred, two hundred thousand dollars out from underneath the mattress and uh, you buy know, a house. The other thing, we also get a lot of immigrants here. Uh, like there's mm-hmm. a huge population of immigrants who would probably be more interested in raps. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it's it when you're speaking to the Hispanic population there, right? There is a lot of immigrant population all throughout Texas. I think whether it be Austin, San Antonio, Houston, yeah, it's um, you know, my wife is El Salvadorian. Her parents are from El Salvador. They migrated here. Um, and they are very much that same story, right? They own a little, going on 50 properties, I think at this point, you know, they, they, they are the American dream, but they very much started out the same way, right? Um, working hard, two, three jobs, bought their first house and on and on and on it went. But I think the, the point is, is that really that Hispanic population, they understand that buying assets is the key, right? Um, it, it is, they are trying to build generational wealth. Um, they understand that concept very, very well. Um, and, and so, yeah, wrapping, I think, makes sense for them when they can't get the loan, right? They still want the property, they can't get the loan. Well, hey, I get the loan, I'll stay in it for four years and then build up the credit and refinance it, right? That is the ultimate goal. Yeah, but I think this be so what are you trying to accomplish? Are you wholesaling? Like what are you doing exactly? Well, right now I'm lending, you know, like because I'm a gator, I'm not a sub two. So I'm okay. just like doing the I'm really just connecting, but um, but I'm also looking for buy and hold multifamily. Um, so right now I found a foreclosure that I'd really like to deal with. Um, so I'm focused on that right now. Okay. So let's talk that through. So you're gator wrestling, you're, you're connecting gators to gators or are you actually out Um, there lending? Yeah, no, I have, um, like today I was contacted by a, um, hard money lender who had a deal um, and needs funding for an investor who's buying a very large portfolio and needs a gap fund. So I have to, so I'm looking for funding for that, but it's only for 30 days they need it. So it's, it's very attractive to the Gators. So, um, they um, well, I love that we ran into each other because we are much the same. Juan would yeah. like to talk to you as would I. We're looking for ninety-seven thousand five hundred dollars for a gap fund as we speak. For how long do you need it? Yeah, so I would like it um, to be somewhere between ninety uh, ninety days to six months, um, but. If I have to take shorter, um, I will, right? So if it's 30 days, we'll go 30 days to 30 days until we figure out what we need to do. Well, it, it's oh, a but I'll like, tell you, the I'm lenders. Sorry. Speak of the devil, Lance is on. <laughs> sorry, Jennifer, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to your, to your yeah. answer. Right. What's up, yeah, guys? Because I'd love to, to talk me. with you more about it. Right there. I'm going to try and get them on real quick. It's crazy. Everybody's hitting them up. We got taco food trucks here at the lake house. We just got here. Nice, man. How's the day been so far? Here, let me turn the camera around. We're talking deal, man. There's just a few people out there trying to talk to Jerry. Say hi, everybody. Lance's reception wins again. Right here, Juan, Juan, we got to get Lance off cricket. Brother. He's using cricket, man. <laughs> let, 
Lance's, Lance's bad reception follows him everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> I, I love when he's like, man, we're at the house. I've got bad reception. He's in Oregon. He's got bad reception. He's at no matter <laughs> hey, where bro, he goes. Say hi, to, say hi to Cody. Yo, yo. Thanks, bro. We. <laughs> Well, I guess Lance has bad reception, but that is understandable. He's in the mountains of Montana. Um, you know, it's not the normal thing. So let's talk a little more, Jennifer. So sure. that being said, oh, well, is he back? No, never mind. So yeah, so let's talk a little bit more. So your gator wrestling. Well, so, so the if you have a if you need a a loan for up to 30 up to three months usually the terms are like 18 to 24 percent in return that they oh i'm sorry i'm sorry 12 to 18 percent in return that they ask for the lenders yeah. and then if it goes to six months they usually ask for 18 to 24 percent in return um, yeah so you're talking more towards hard money lenders right now right no this is uh private money so like strange. the returns are on the back end from the equity. Yeah, that's strange, right? Because normally speaking, true private money lenders, when you're talking about doctors, lawyers, people that have money sitting there that want to spend it, they're somewhere between 10 and 15% right now. Not these yeah. guys. Yeah. And then when you start talking more hard money lenders slash PMLs that they're, they're PMLs, but they're actually pay, playing more of a hard money lending game, right? So then you start talking about 15 to 18, up to 24%, which I'm at, at this point, I mean, it really wouldn't matter to me. I mean, the gap lend, the, there's well, enough that's the other thing, money but the in gap the deal. Loans, it's very risky, your second position. So people you know when it gets to six months in second position like you don't know what the market's going to be like at six months and if what's your access strategy like refinance <laughs> excuse me um Bless you. you know so if it's to refinance like they they get they get you know worried about it so it becomes riskier as the time prolongs you know and so they want it to be worth their while and i i just know that the lenders like that i've come across they won't do gap funds for less than like 10 percent. they won't do it you know but if you have lenders that will i say go with them because the lenders i know won't so it looks like Lance is walking through Jerry Norton's house, right? <laughs> Which I'm assuming yeah. Jerry probably bought this and like completely remodeled it. I mean, it's sweet. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. The loft up there. Yeah. So is this like a multi story or is that just. It's kind of a. Yeah, just... it looks like it goes downstairs too, actually. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, there's a downstairs crazy man yeah this is cool man very yeah. cool so how's how's the view the view is insane you want to see here i'll bring you guys out to the view yeah, check man. it out love to see that look at this all of black all the windows this is insane look at that oh, wow man it's beautiful is that amazing or what yeah look at this stair yeah. it's like three thousand stairs down to the, to the boat <laughs> Just get up, just get up in the morning and run your stairs. Exactly, right? I hear they actually say the water is like pretty warm. You wouldn't expect it. Yeah, is it does it sit on a lake? Yeah, it's sitting on a lake. Yeah, man. Jerry, but I mean, you would expect that Jerry Norton's living the dream, right? Oh, bro. So here's this guest house <laughs> right here. We'll go check yeah. that out real quick. Yeah, it's down. Okay. up in the house. Like, yep. Let's check this part out, guys. Oh, bathroom. 
Hi guys. Yeah, just so like everybody. Can... Say hi. Yeah. Oh. This, this is sick. Like all the all the sub two community, man. Yeah, there's uh, like 300 people here. Look at that little tiny loft up there, little stairs. That's trippy. It's cool, man. Very it's nice. kind of breaking up, man. The picture, which is totally understandable because you're in the hills of Montana, man. So we don't expect the reception to be amazing. But guys, yeah, like just remember, right? Like just for the sub two community and, and the gators, right? Completely uh, free trip for all these folks. Um, they were all chosen, um, you know, out of the sub two community, Venus community, I think some from Abraham's community. And it's just a, you know, collective, uh, you know, trip for all these folks and Jerry Norton's, you know, opening There's up the man right call. there. You got to go buy that guy a taco, out. man, and wedge yourself they're gonna, in there. Can you hear me? <laughs> I just don't yeah. Uh, they're going to take a group out to tour like a $4 million uh, storage unit, potential uh Seller finance storage tomorrow. Nice. I'm trying to flip the camera around. So there we go. Yeah. So they're only going to take about 20 people, I guess, to it. And then they're going to do a mastermind, small select group, uh, and kind of have a little mastermind um, tomorrow at some point. But there, I saw Pace posted that they want to take 3,000 people next year. He's already planning it. So holy shit. Yeah, dude. I don't know how they're going to do it, but. Sounds crazy. He so, already made a post about it. Hey, Lance, talk about this morning a little bit, man, because when we connected earlier, you know, you were in a room, it looked like full of sub twos, just doing some networking. Um, maybe you guys yeah. were doing some classes. So talk, talk a little bit about it, man. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, and I'll be sharing some stuff on Facebook on the RR page too, but, uh, one of the things with the Vina talks capital raising that really got that really hit me and something I never actually thought about as a capital raiser myself and a connector is uh, to target people that are in an industry that you're familiar with or maybe your husband or a wife you know like uh, her husband's a doctor for example so when she's on the plane or in the lounge waiting for the plane she meets people and, and starts conversations with people and builds connections and relationships, you know, and, you know, a good portion of those people will end up investing with her because, um, you know, she has some commonality. And that was something I'd never thought of before. Uh, you to reach out to people like for me, it would be construction like with you, Damon, right? Like for lenders, because right. we can relate to them. We have a lot to talk about, right? More in common. Right. That was like a huge takeaway for me. Um, yeah, man, that's something yeah, and, that I mean, uh, it was just really like that. That's kind of ahead. something that you don't think of, you know what I mean? Because you, you, yeah, you're like oh, the moment you're flying, whatever, but you don't think about the money that's sitting right next to you, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, they were talking a lot about yeah. processes too. They're putting in something in place. Cody Barton got up and talked about. Uh, putting processes in place to just help us streamline our businesses. Um, they, they didn't talk a ton about it, but just also talked about like they were going to be rolling out something to like if you were just learning, looking to hire your first VA or your first employee, like kind of putting some processes together to help you figure out what you need and why you need those people. So that, that would be, that's going to be a huge value coming to the SEP2 community. I'm really looking forward to that. That's awesome. Hey, you know what yeah. else I heard, man, is that Pace is going to release like through Juan, but Pace is going to release the zero down course where he's going to be talking about all of the businesses that he's buying zero down. And he's going to give that oh, to the nice. sub community free. Like yes. he's going to wrap up yeah. like a whole set of, of uh, uh, like um uh classes or you know whatever much like sub two but dude i thought that yeah i, I mean unbelievable man like yeah i got to meet some really cool people today though i got to meet abraham in person got to hang out with pace a little bit talk to him about some deals we're working on uh 
who else we got we got to tell Vina and actually we flew with Vina flew here with Vina so that was pretty cool um got to meet Nick her her lawyer uh and then uh haven't met Jerry yet but we did I got to talk to Cody a little bit um there's a lot of rock stars here though Irving Cortez Jennifer uh Myron and Carolyn Briley um Let's see. There, there's just a bunch of people here. I'm trying to think of some names. Maj. I don't know if you guys know Maj. He's really cool. He's here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah he's some, some major rock stars, dude. Oh, I got to meet Rock Hendon. Uh, rock is here. Who? Who? Ah. Rock. Rock Henderson. Oh, yeah, man. I know Rock. The protege. Oh. The protege. Yeah, I know. The protege. Yeah. He's like, let me see if I got your contact. He has me under Lance Rig and Granite. Dude. Lance. <laughs> yeah, Angie's here. Yeah. What's great about Rock, man, he's he's a he's really great at finding deals because he's a connector like you, man. Like, man, that right. that guy, he he's he just is connected to everybody, man. He he knows something, someone for everything. I love that guy. Yeah, super cool, dude. I got to hang out. He sat right behind me and he looked at me and he went to shake my hand and I didn't recognize him. He's really a lot bigger in real life, man. Oh yeah. And man. uh he's a big I shook guy. his hand. I was like, hey man, I turned around and then I I looked back and I looked at his name tag. I was like, oh damn, what's up, dude? He's like, Yeah, man, no, that's cool. <laughs> like yeah, so for, but, let, uh, let me let me fill in the group, man. So for everybody that doesn't know we're talking about rock there's a guy uh rock when i was at the deal maker protege weekend in tampa um you know learning about business buying or kind of adding to that i met a guy named rock and we myself lance rock got engaged in possibly buying a granite company um but it, it fell through but when i'd say we were very very close we were very very close right we were almost to the point of putting in an loi well we did put in an loi on the company but they didn't they didn't accept it right they just didn't like the terms um so anyways that's who lance is talking about hey Sorry, guys look it. who i found what? what's up who's that guy what's up, abraham <laughs> damon what are you doing how come you not here with us man i tried man i just didn't make the cut I wanted to I wanted to bring my gi and, and roll with you, man. Let you beat me up. <laughs> I wanted you I wanted to roll with you so bad. Oh my god. I don't but, but do I want to roll with some you? Of my man? Tricks. I got some tricks yeah. that nobody else has. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> right on, brother. And hey I really appreciate you guys for coming hey. on, man. Thank you. Well, thank you, bro. See if, uh, it's just so it's so loud here man yeah he can't we yeah. can't hear you i i didn't think about a microphone or something <laughs> didn't think it out well but you know hey we're trying man i'm doing my best there. hey dude it's all good man we love you man we appreciate you for making the attempt and coming on and i think bare minimum man for showing the group you know kind of what that whole experience is like right I mean, at the end of the Absolutely. day, it's, just about, it's about putting yourself in the room with the right people, continuing to work with people, network, network, network. And I think that's what we're saying all the time, man. And oh, hey, here's Vina. You want to say hi to Vina, yeah. guys, real oh, quick? Yeah, man. Yeah. We yeah, love Vina. <laughs> Are you working? Can you say hi to our guests on our podcast again? Yeah. Hey, Vina. Hi, Vina. Hi, Vina. There they are. Oh my gosh, look at all these people. You guys are missing out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm missing out because I'm over here working like a, like a, I was going to say a slave, but I'm not woman. actually working yeah, like yeah, a slave yeah, yeah. at all. I just figured, I, I just wanted to say hi. Thanks, Vina. Okay, I'll be, I'll come back and say hi in a minute. Give me a minute. Okay. Thanks, Vina. Thank you. Vina's awesome. Yeah, man. That's well, awesome man unbelievable man that lance i think like gets to bring that experience hey, anyone know this guy hey. you know mante mante what's up bro how you doing nice to meet you finally <laughs> look at this guy this guy this guy's an up-and-coming rock star here brandon fernandez dude is awesome hey when when is brandon going to come on the podcast that's All right, the I'll question. Be 
man, guys, this property just goes on forever. Like where, when, where does it stop, man? Man, it's, <laughs> it's nuts. Like it's amazing, man. All those stairs that lead down to the water. And, yeah, and it's, I'm it's a, so sick. I'm, I'm a big time hunter, man. So I love, I love yeah. Montana. It's unbelievable there. Bro, there was some bighorn sheep in the parking lot at Glacier the other day. <laughs> I know you get, you ever uh, got on any bighorn sheep? <laughs> I have not, man. Not yet. Not yet. I want to, I want to bow hunt one, man. We need to get some people over to this area where it's quiet. Yeah. It's insane guys. Super cool. Yeah, man. Unbelievable, man. What a cool experience. A, yeah. So talk about, amazing. talk about, talk about what they have planned for you tomorrow, man. Did, have they told you that? Bro, it's basically just a networking event, man. It's pretty open. There's get some people going to go hiking. Um, I think we're going to uh, do some more boating tomorrow. Um, yeah, but it's pretty open. There's gonna, they're going to select a small group uh, to do some like real tight networking with. So hopefully I'll be in there. But I don't know. There's a lot of people here, man. So we'll see. I love that, man. I love we will that. see. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, much it's wide, amazing, like open. Man. Well, dude, all I can say is uh, congrats to you, man, on getting to go there. And uh, I know that, you know, you'll make those contacts and uh, bring yeah. them all back to the group, man. And, and Yes. Uh, yeah, man, that networking is where it's at, guys. Hey, Lance, I don't want to keep you, man. Yeah. I know you're, I know you want to get back to networking. We appreciate it, All right, guys. Man. If you all right, I'll hop back, back on if I can get a quiet please. spot with somebody, okay? Thank you. Absolutely, man. All right, guys. Later, See you Thanks, later. Lance. Appreciate it, buddy. So there you go, guys. Right, like uh, one of our one of our group, Lance, is is at, actually at community camp, um, networking. Right, and that's what we kind of constantly preach in this group is network, network, network. Right. Um, if I don't know someone, Juan may, Lance may, Justin may. Um, if I could only tell you guys in terms of just doing deals right now, how much we are all working together. Um, we are in the process. We turned in an LOI on a company today. Um, it looks like we're going to create a deal there. Um, $2.4 million for what will be an online. It's like a, it's what I would call like a digital marketing platform, right? But it's a wholesaling, but we have some ideas on how we're going to roll up and cross sell. Um, on this thing, but it looks like we're going to make the deal for 2.4 million. It's going to be 1.2 on the loan, 1.2 on the seller carry. Um, and more than likely, we will be into the entire deal by the time it's done for no money down. Um, we'll see. Um, it'll be very, very close to it, uh, if not uh, right at it, right? And we're using something very similar to a Morby method. Um, on that particular company that we just just kind of picked up from Pace, right? And so um, we'll probably be bringing uh, the owners in to the LLC, uh, file a UCC one so that they come into a second lien position as a as a silent partner, um, and then they'll get paid out. Uh, that won't even hit until 24 months after we sign, um, and then more than likely three to five years will balloon them out of the deal anyway um and and just be done with it right um so we're in the throes of that we're in the throes of a multi-family deal uh, 12 units we're actually loaning on that one um but i am uh, probably looking at doing a cash out refi on one of my properties uh, to put down on that one um because it's such a good buy um, it's at about 60% of the actual ARV. Um, we will obviously, you know, put, put a down payment there, but in six months we'll cash out refi. We'll pull all that back out. Um, we will stabilize rents. It looks like, you know, on the mortgage, it'll probably be around 2,900 to $3,000 a month. However, stabilized rents on the place will be about $10,500 a month. So more than likely when we do the cash out refi, 
will actually be closer to an appraisal value of about 850,000. I'll pull the cash out of that, put it into a development loan, and then we're gonna build 30 units down the right-hand side. Uh, there'll be 15 units upstairs and downstairs. We'll probably push the valuation of that place to $5 million, right, roughly, um, within the next five years with a possible exit strategy or just a buy and hold, right? We, we will see how that goes. And then we've got another deal that we're working in Abilene right now, and I've got some other deals going outside of that, right? So as you can see, the key, right, has nothing to do with what I'm actually doing. Every single one of those deals was brought to me by somebody in my network. None of those deals did I go out and find on my own. Just, just take that in, right? None of those deals did I actually go out and look for on my own. They were all brought through people in our network who trust us as investors to get these things done, right? And then on top of it, um, one of the other partners that we have in here, Justin A.B., he's not here today. He's on vacation, living the dream too. Um, <laughs> he's actually at a, I think, what do you say, a $4 million house in the Sonoma Valley or something he's, like that? He's, uh, he's slumming it right now, man. He's slumming it. Yeah, yeah. He's just out there <laughs> just uh, living a hard life. Right? So <laughs> we're actually working on putting together a fund of funds. Um, the fund of funds you know, we kind of learned about that from, a, Justin knows about that, but we learned about that kind of the intricacies of that from another partner who's actually doing it. He's done it. He's teaming up with Vina. We'll probably be doing a fund of funds that we will engage in buying property and businesses with. Um, so at that point, you know, we'll be using other people's money um, to go out and purchase these things. To come back to you, Jennifer, just for a second, when we were talking about, you know, the gator lending and hard money and private money and just to understand, right, we gator lend as well. Um, you know, Juan gator lends, I gator lend, we also private money lend. Um, I, I do all of the above. And I'm, I have charged all of those rates across the board, right? And, and, um, Again, right, it becomes about the tolerance of the lender, the situation that you're in. And I, in no way, shape, or form, down those guys for charging 15 to 18% because I absolutely, absolutely would um, on deals that obviously are more of a risk for me, right? Um, well, I can tell you, like, um, so I just found funding for a sub two student who it was uh he needed the purchase price for a um property and it was ninety thousand i think and um he did not want to give more than 10 percent return didn't want to do it and so i found a lender who was willing to to, to go 10 percent, but it's first lien you know um, mm -hmm. so it was a little easier because of that, you know, but then he came up to 12% for this lender, you know, to sure. get the deal done. So yeah, you know, and I, I find in this in sub two, like they're kind of wise to the gator ways or lending, you know, so they're a little more, um, cautious I, about yeah I, well, I think it's not that we're wise to it I think that how do you put that this isn't my first time right I've used many many right. lenders in the past this is not my first time and I know I know not only what to expect out of the lender right but I also know what the lender expects out of me and I think it's understanding that when you talk to a lender the the more seasoned that you are the more secure they feel right yeah so i think that when you're talking to somebody who understands the deal i know exactly what my exit strategy is i know exactly how long i'm gonna that may set them at ease a little more and then we're bargaining the deal back and forth right hey yeah and that's why i told the lender i told him it was totally risk-free 
Like right. there's no risk well, in yeah. this, you know, like it's going to be Nothing like is risk free. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nothing yeah. is risk free. This is investing. And that's the first yeah, thing but I tell you. As you. far as lending goes, this was pretty risk free. Like yeah. it was. Well, I always tell a lender, uh, I mean, upfront, don't trust me. I wouldn't trust anybody as an investor. I've Nothing heard Case say that too. Yeah. <laughs> you are investing, right? And I, and I expect you to do your due diligence about the deal and who I am, right? Um, as, a, as an investor. But I think that investors appreciate that, right? And, and so whenever I'm talking with a private money lender, a gap lender, yes, there is room for negotiation, right? I may want 10%, he may want 12, maybe we meet in the, in the middle, uh, you know, or maybe I can bring him down to 10% with five to 10% equity on the back end, right? Um, hey, when we cash out, um, I'll bring you five or 10%. I can show you why that's viable because the market value on this property is 570,000. I know that we'll appraise for 650. Um, I am a real estate agent in this area. I know this area, right? Those things, tend to set those lenders at ease a little more because they're like, oh, okay, I've got a guy who's actually done his homework. I think the thing that I, I, I think the thing that people see is that there's like, whenever, and I don't know about you, Juan, but like whenever somebody posts up for Gator Lend, hey, I need a Gator Lender, now they've got 60 people that inundate the posts, right? And so I think right. it's more about the fact they know they have choices. They don't just have to take the first one. Well, you know, also Pace has made it clear that if you're not making 100000 a month as a Gator lender, you're not doing it right. So, you know, there's an expectation amongst the, the Gators to charge, you know, a, a, a large amount for the lending. Right. So right. there's a lot of them that that really have <clears throat> what I would call unrealistic expectations, you know, for mm -hmm. these lens. But a lot of them are only lending on like EMDs. So they're only mm -hmm. lending five thousand and they and so, you know, to ask for more back that that would make sense, you know, but when you One get into things... larger amounts, it it's a different story. Yeah, and one of the things that you learn as you kind of go on in this, um, and we learn this from a private, well, I guess you would call it a gator lending deal, so to speak, gator slash private money lending in California that we did, that actually were in a ride. We ended up running into a con artist, and he's up on 67 counts of felony fraud in the city of Placentia for uh, robbing them of money. But what he's doing is he's out doing Morby methods and the differentiation of what he is doing is he's using straw buyers. So nobody is the, is kind of the, is knowing, right, of what he's actually doing, but he's, he's putting together a Morby method deal, but then he's using a guarantor. Hey, my credit is not so good. I need you to come in and guarantee this loan for me. So they go in and they guarantee. And then the way that he's into the company um, he actually pulls out of the company, um, leverages the property out to the hill, will do business credit on it. Um, he will pull hundreds of thousands of dollars out of the property, and then he'll back out of the LLC and he'll leave the guarantor there to hold the bag. And he'll never pay, and he'll never make a payment um, on it. And he is not the one that gets in trouble. It is the person who guarantored the loan. They end up, or they, they're basically committing a felony. Right. So, so yeah, we ended up getting caught up in that deal. We gave $57,000 that we actually lost. Right. So um, what you have to be careful of when you go into some of these deals is that when you're charging too much money, you can get into a usury problem. There are usury laws in the States, right? Um, in California, those usury laws dictate how much interest you can actually charge someone. So even though you're transactional lending on a deal, what they can do is go under contract with you. 
So just for instance, they could go into con under contract with you in a non rescinding state like Texas, right? And then when it comes time to get the money back, the guy says, no, I'm not going to rescind. They were charging me too much interest. And then they go and they look at the contract and, oh, guess what? You're charging him 18% interest on a loan. And then they pull to the usury laws in Texas and they'll trump you out in litigation and basically end up taking your money because it would be a possible felony usury, right? So there's a lot of tricky things that you I have to be careful of. that's why you do a JV agreement. Mm. So the JV agreement, is good but actually uh was it no it wasn't you won it was uh kevin kevin jackson in austin he just ran into a deal where he called me about on a deal in austin he was jv with the person and then during the deal the person said you know what i don't i'm not going to give you this money anymore you didn't do any work in it yet kevin did all the work right and title told him that money does not belong to you because your name is not on the purchase contract. It's a civil matter. Well, so yes, you do have a JV agreement, but do you know how much it costs to civil litigate an issue? Minimum $10,000 because I've done it. I've actually done civil lawsuits within a company. And so, it, it, you get into these like tricky situations, right? Where gator lending in and of itself is very easy. I mean, it's a easy, it makes a ton of sense, but I think Juan will be the first one to tell you and I'll be the first one to tell you that sometimes more goes into it than meets the eye. And you gotta be very careful because you're dealing, I, I think that it always comes back to knowing who it is that you're working with, right? And I think that people think just because it's a transactional lend that, hey, it's not leaving escrow. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that that is true, but there's a lot of other things going on sometimes than just that, right? And that's stating like we had irrevocable escrow instructions with this guy. And when I tell you he is smart, he is an absolute con artist, but he is yeah. smart. This was not the first time that he'd done this. He's probably done this, I mean, hundreds of times, right? Because he perfected his craft. He knows that in California, escrow and title are separate entities. Uh -huh. So what did he do? I had irrevocable escrow instructions with him. He switched escrow, right? He moved from one escrow to another. And so when he did that, he was able to switch title. And he switched title and completely circumvented our irrevocable escrow instructions. Craziest thing, like, man, if, when I tell you we should write a documentary about, about the deal in California, um, it would really teach people, I think, in the Gator community, it would be helpful to put it out there to tell people like what to be careful of. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like it always comes back to like knowing who it is that you're lending to. Like you have to develop relationships. I I will not just lend to anybody. Like I am going to know you, I am going to talk to you, I'm gonna I'm going to ask you if you've done this in the past. I'm going to want proof. I'm going to want a schedule of real estate, like all of it, right? Yeah, and I think I think the most important thing to to keep in mind when doing, you know, not only connecting, right? So, for for example, I'm doing a connecting deal right now um, for a, a PML that's a Gator, and this is a different type of deal. It's not your typical deal where, you know, they're asking for money for, you know, a rehab that stays with entitled. This is completely different. Like this investor already had um, bought in the property. It's already, you know, theirs. They're actually working on the rehab side of it, but they need the funds to be able to complete the job. They ran out of their initial funds. They need 20K as kind of like a gap, if you will. And so they wanted the money directly sent to them. Well, as we've all been taught, we're not doing that, right? 
So we have to go through the process of going through a title and escrow, making sure that we put a, a second lien on that house and make sure that our lender is going to be covered. Well, you know, the, the actual investor ended up getting, you know, just kind of annoyed over the process because they didn't get the money, you know, at a snap, at, at, you know, once they snapped their fingers. So they were very frustrated and decided to go and get the 20, you know, the, the, the actual lend from somebody else. And then basically I'm sitting here going, well, wait a minute, my, my, my lender has gone through this entire process. They're paying for the TC. They're paying for some of these fees already. And now you're basically leaving my lender kind of holding the bag there. I said, this whole thing was that you knew what the, what the process was going to be. And it wasn't going to be that you were going to get it tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I, I'm working on actually salvaging that. Um, you know, one of the things that you have to do is get creative on solutions, right? On resolving issues like this. So I told her, I said, look, instead of letting this die, you, you did get the 20K from somebody else because you need to get this project done. I get it. But instead of letting this die, why don't we talk about another project that you might have that might have the funds needed for that? And so she's like, okay, well, maybe we can talk about that. Okay, well, now guess what? Now we're working on switching all of that title work over to a different property. And now we're providing the, the right expectations to her. She comes back to me and says, can I get the money by tomorrow? I'm like, no, you're not getting the money tomorrow. It's going to take a while, right? It's got to go through title. So give me another project that's going to be a little bit further out that's going to give us, give us a little breathing room. So the bottom line lessons learned there is that um, we were able to ensure that now the proper expectations are set. Everybody knows what's going on. Everybody knows uh, when that money is supposed to be uh, sent over to them. And then what, of course, the lender is receiving in return for the protection of their investment. So it's just something to be aware of. Uh, know the deal. Um, know, the, know the people involved. Um, like, like Damon said, conversate with them. You know, I'm actually thinking about um, actually, I haven't been thinking about it. We've been talking about um, she's she's out of Houston and I've been talking about coming down to Houston and actually sitting down with her and her husband and talking about how we can be partners on the lending side for her going into future projects. So, you know, that's yeah, that's a possibility. Right. So we're building relationships. And that's what I told her. I said, look, I said, it's not about, you know, because she came back and said, well, you should really be worried about me and not your lender. I said, well, no, that's that's where you got it wrong. I said, I'm worried. I, I'm not worried. I said, what I'm focused on is the goal of building relationships where we can make this a win-win for everybody, right? So that, in essence, was what I was trying to convey to her. And she got that. She's like, okay, well, she can understand that now. It's not about trying to make money from my lender. And I'm not just going to wor be worried about them as as my borrower. So I'm I'm... I'm focused on the goal in mind. Everybody wins. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I think it's important, man, that, um, I, I mean, I, and again, I, I always look to others to see how they feel, but you know, I spent a lot of time in the military and I really learned how to be a listener, right? Because you kind of learn early on that there are these sergeants and captains and, you know, they just all know so much more than you and you're the new guy, you know, and you, you learn how to, I think really you learn how to make those connections right early on in the military. Like, Hey, I, I don't, I don't know this thing. Can you show me how to do that thing? Right. I think that particular trait in my character that, that's been built into there has been really important because it allows me to understand what I'm not good at. I have a lot of things that I'm not good at, and but I am good at, hey, I don't know that thing. And I'm willing to reach out to somebody who does know that thing and, and, and partner with them and teach me how to do that. And then I will know that the, the next time around. And I think that's important, right? Whenever you're private money lending, because one of the, and, and I'll get to you, uh, Jason, because I, I definitely want to hear what you have to say, because by the way, dude, your background is awesome. I love it. It's a good, super maybe, cool. maybe, maybe we should yeah. have Jason do a little, a little intro class for us on how to get that done. Yeah. <laughs> on how to get your background looking super clean, man. Right. So, yeah, like one of the cool things that came out of that, you know, 
terrible California deal that I like Juan will tell you I was so down on myself, man. I just kicked myself for months about it because I felt like I had done everything right. But one of the cool things that came out of it was I met a guy named Adam Drysborough. And Adam Drysborough was the private money lender on that deal who brought $750,000 to the table. Well, thanks. Uh, we, we call him Valdemort now in our group, but you know, thank you Valdemort for doing that to me because you taught me all of these things that I needed to know. Like I'm so appreciative of that guy now um, because he has made me a stronger investor. He has taught me about things in the deal that I didn't know. And I've met an amazing private money lender who now when I have questions, I call upon him and I'm like, Hey, Adam, I've, you know, possibly got this guy who wants to make a deal, yada, yada. Do you want to work with him? Sure. You bring him and I'll, I'll show you how the entire deal works from start to finish. And I'll pay you for connecting us. The last time I did a deal with him, he, he gave me $2,000 just for getting the deal done. Right. So I think every deal teaches us something new and it helps us to broaden and expand what we know how to do so that we can bring more to the table anyway um jason man come on and by the way jennifer i wasn't uh i wasn't like coming in hot on your question i i just thought i thought what you brought there was really cool to expand on because man when you get into the private money lending realm the gator realm it's almost like people make it sound super easy and it is, but it's not like there are a lot of tricky things to know. And it's a balancing act of like what Juan said, keeping people happy and getting everybody to the table so that you can make your money on the deal, you know? Yeah. Anyways. Hey, Jason, uh, come on, man. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Hey, how's it going guys? Doing well, man. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I was just uh, kind of wanting to get some insight because I've heard a couple other uh, sub two people in the community say the same thing. And some another girl that's on my team here, she's door knocking as well. But uh, basically, I keep running into these deals where the principal balance is really low. The ARV is good. So the numbers make sense on paper. But then the reinstatement is so high because these people haven't paid their mortgage in three, four years because of COVID. And then mm -hmm. by the time you get the reinstatements and if they have, you know, one or two small judgments, you're basically right. Like I've got one right now. I've got under contract ARV is right around 300. But after the reinstatement and everything else, paying like getting her three grand to move on and then paying the, the judgments, it's like right at 200. So it's like pretty much where a wholesaler needs to be but I'm not doing the repair. So I'm trying to figure out like, how do I carve out something for myself there? Or, you know, uh, I'm dealing with the bank because I was going to try to delay the auction that's coming up in August. Um, but I mean, are you guys finding that the banks will possibly take a discounted amount at this point in the game? Uh, well, I mean, because I know once they take it back, they're still going to have to pay out real estate commissions. They're going to have to pay holding costs, get the property sure. ready for market, all that. So do you think they would still take a 20% haircut on what she still owes or what the payoff is? At yeah, this so, the, so the answer there is yes. I actually had one similar not too long ago. Um, number one, are, are you a real estate agent or anybody in your group? I'm a broker agent? myself, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, perfect, right? So... I actually had one of those not too long ago, right? And what I did was a little bit the same, but a little bit different, but, you know, they were coming up, they had an auction, um, but I knew that in terms of a short sale, it would still make, right? And I knew that the bank was willing to take a, a haircut on it. Um, so what I did is I listed it online, right? as a short sale, I had them start working on the uh, package, right, for, for the short sale. Um, mm -hmm. But when I listed that up, the funny thing is I got all the short sale buyers that came to the table who were willing to pay that 180000 right, for the $250,000 property. Um, so 
what I did was I said, yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, we'll take the cash price, but we're doing the loss mitigation package. We should be ready to short sale um, here pretty, pretty quickly, but there is an availability for a subject two on this. The problem is the reinstatement is a little bit high. Well, you've got cash buyers that are willing to do the short sale on it. So, you know, they'll come in and they'll buy um, no, no problem like that. So mm -hmm. I don't know, that's the way that I've looked at it in the past where I kind of working the real estate angle slash the investor angle and mm -hmm. you're a broker, you know, more than me, I'm, I'm an agent, right? But my broker does not seem to mind that at all, right? And I just, he kind of, he said, it's kind of like a fine line, right? But he was like, you know, as long as you just kind of pay me offline about it, <laughs> you know, like I'll just right. pay him a little for letting me list it on the MLS. I don't even think that you would necessarily have to do that because you're a broker. I don't know with that. Does that seem to maybe be an option? Yeah, I guess my concern is the the time frame. I don't know if when I talked to the guy today, I mean, I'm dealing with M&T Bank and it just seemed like there was one person that keeps like whenever he call there, I, I never have to wait on hold for 45 minutes or anything like that. Like literally it rings mm -hmm. and somebody picks up and the guy starts talking to me and I was like, OK, I'm interested in submitting an offer and on the for this property. And he was like, OK, just send over your authorization and uh, I need a contract and a preliminary HUD statement. I mean, pretty much what I would get on a normal, you know, short sale. I haven't done a short sale in 15 years, but you know, like that's normally what I would have gotten. So it right. seemed like I just kind of bypassed everything because it's coming up to auction and dealing with one person one on one. So I don't know. I figured well, I was just gonna submit a contract. Yeah, we, we had a, I mean, I think so, right? Because one, that's kind of like the Abilene deal, like the 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 um the pay the payoff on this isn't quite you know isn't that high but but in terms of you know they're going to auction on the first so we are in an absolute mad dash to and this guy is a veteran we're you know as much trying to help him as we are you know trying to help ourselves on the deal but what we did is have kiki shrugs because she is an an, an absolute whiz at getting these things out of foreclosure but we got a purchase contract and, and so that's the cash offer, right? We take that to the bank, we get that um, entered into title. Um, and then once you've got that, right, you can you can stop the foreclosure and then mm -hmm. it becomes the sub two contract or whatever you're gonna do behind that. And they'll at least give you 30 days, right? So to right. me, that gives you the, the time to do whatever the hell it is you're gonna do with it. I does I mean, would that seem like a more viable option in the in the situation that you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I could always reach out to her and see if she can take care of it or, you know, I don't know if I should just take a gamble and see what they come back with on Monday if I submit an offer tomorrow or something. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think I, I would minimum, submit the offer. Yeah, That's I would I would do I would do both in parallel um, because here's here's the thing, too, is you don't want to get to Monday and for whatever reason, you just didn't reach the right channels or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And, then, and then you lost it. Right. So yeah. if you do this in parallel, you know, you, yeah, you know, I, okay. I think, I think Kiki's team charges about 500 bucks to stop a foreclosure. So, um, I mean, you're, you're, they're just, they're just really, you're, really good at it. Right. You're up against it right now. Right. Cause we're talking about like, you only have Friday and Monday, um, to, to stop it. And so you need somebody who knows the right channels, who knows how to deal with this and how to actually, you know, uh, stop a foreclosure quickly. I, I know how to do it. I've done them. I, I don't know if, yeah. if you have the experience, but I mean, I, I've done it myself and, and that's not, it's not about it being hard or difficult. It's about time. It's about, right. you know, it's about time. If, if they're an expert at it, right. And I'm good at it. I'd rather have the expert on it. Right. Yeah. Because here's the thing. It's not only a deal that falls through, it's the opportunity to help somebody that falls through. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's that to me, that's the biggest thing is like, man, I just, I feel real bad when, you know, when we're like this close and, we, we just, the house goes to foreclosure. I had a house in here in Austin that, you know, I was trying to help this, the seller out. And I'm talking like, we got down to like eight o'clock in the morning on Tuesday and we were still potentially going to stop the foreclosure. And unfortunately the, the lender just didn't want to work with us. And she ended up going to foreclosure. I felt so bad. 
you know, because it's like we work, I work all day Monday, pretty much from the morning all the way to the evening, trying to get all done. I, and I'm not saying that I could have done anything better or, or different, but having an expert, they probably would have helped. Because the other thing that that does is, is to, to Damon's point, it's going to give you some time, some breathing room, right? To really understand yeah. what you can do with the property and, and, and know how to, you know, give yourself a good exit strategy for it. That's the thing that that's the most important thing is you don't want to, you don't want to end up, you know, you're going to make an offer right now. Right. But again, you need to ensure that you have all the numbers in place and ensure, you know, exactly what exit strategy you're going to go out of um, and not be in a position where you're kind of stuck. And yeah. so if, if you're able to stop that foreclosure, gives you some breathing room, gives you some time to really think and sit and analyze and, and leverage, leverage, leverage the community. Is that kind of where you're focusing, Jason? Is in that foreclosure space, or are you like? Yeah, I'm. Like, you know, like well, I mean, I've done all kinds of stuff. Uh, I got into real estate 2003. Kind of rode the market up uh, last after the crash. Uh, kind of took a break. My wife and I have a property management company. We do uh, short term rentals and annual management. Uh, she heads up the annual management. And I've been doing that and some e-com and then uh, I bought a few a few deals here and there <clears throat> over the past 13 years, but really just getting back into it now. So I'm, I'm kind of trying not to bounce all over the place. Uh, I'm, I know how to do a lot of stuff. Obviously, <laughs> there's a lot to learn compared to what I used to do. But uh, yeah, I'm knocking doors right now doing foreclosures or pre foreclosures okay. Yeah, man. I, and you're talking about a space that I got started in, like uh, really uh, my story. I'm not the same, but, you know, started a while back, obviously. And I certainly don't pretend that I know everything, man. I'm, I'm learning every day. I know I know a lot, but I don't know a lot either. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but I got started in that foreclosure space and I'm much like Juan, man, I've, I've brought them up to the day and, and stopped them, right? But mm -hmm. um, they are a task. They are time consuming. They are emotionally draining too, because you've got the person that you're trying to help. And I do feel like, you know, like somebody like Kiki, and we're happy to make that, that contact if that is where you're going to be focused, you know, help. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Contact. I mean, it's like, yeah, I let them focus on it. And then that allows me to focus on, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to wrap it? Am I going to wholesale? Am I going to subtail it? Like, you know, what exactly is my exit strategy? Because to me, man, when you're, you, you know how it is, when you're in that plight trying to stop it, it's about all that you can focus on at the moment, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the auction's August 7th, so my time's definitely limited. Wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, where's the property at? It's in Conway, South Carolina, which is like 15 minutes oh, outside of okay, Beach. Okay. I don't know if you know where that's at or not. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's that's fine. I, I thought it was in Texas. Um, no, but that's, oh no. <laughs> you got you got you got a little breathing room. That's good. And I was actually talking to Adam Nelson with uh, Batch Leads earlier, and he was saying that you know bring in pretty much like a, a nursing home type program. He he said reach out to him and he he's got some connections for that too and it can cash flow pretty good, big money on it yeah yeah man i well and now many of my properties man i'm taking to like pad split or the nurse you know like something along those lines where it's like a business and a business right like yeah yeah so i agree a hundred percent like i try to cash flow them now um as as much as possible then one of these properties i got uh, not too long ago, man, I'm putting like six or seven rooms in this thing and then doing pad split at an average of 750 a room. I mean, I'll clear 1500 to $2,000 a month and run on it. Yeah, uh, th that seems like to be the market that's kind of emerging uh, and yeah. moving in that direction. I think Airbnb is, uh, I think you, you either have to rise to the cream of the crop with Airbnb um, right now or <laughs> you're suffering because we I, we did well the past three years of short-term rentals. And then all of a sudden this past year, it's it, we're down 48% in Myrtle Beach on Airbnb right now. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a dead market by any means. No. But I think the market that we're in, it's a struggle, right? And I, I watched this, uh, just to, to add to that, I watched this very um, interesting Anderson uh, and Associates. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but like mm -hmm. Hunt Coons really big they're attorneys and big into big business structure but they have an amazing podcast man they're real estate attorneys and 
they they had this architect on who was really focused in like low income housing and so what he's doing is he'll go buy a property and then he's the architect of record right and he'll build these low cost you know like like a restaurant on bottom with units on top like that type thing right that work yeah. Um, where he's yeah where he's like housing you know um homeless people that are in transition and so the state will subsidize yada 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 so they were actually talking about the numbers and how the U.S. right now is at such a lack of low income housing because everybody's been focused on pushing rents right higher and higher that you have this huge massive portion of the population that's wanting to pay 750 to 800 bucks a month but they can't find the apartments to do it right so that's yeah. why something like pad split to me makes a lot of sense I'm, I'll give you the internet, you know, it's a shared bills, average 750 to 800 bucks a month. I mean, the blue collar worker will do that all day long. Right. So anyways, just food for thought, man. I, I love to have made the contact. You're a really experienced investor. We love to have you guys um, come on and uh, add, you know, add to our knowledge base here, man. And uh, if there's anything that we can do to help you make the connection to make that, um, foreclosure easier let us know yeah man appreciate it hey can you put kiki's information in the chat one for him please yeah we'll do that i think i think she'll be a good a good contact for you man well guys man uh i guess lance is is busy he's out there networking he's not going to come back on but uh we appreciate you jason uh, we appreciate everybody that came on and talked Jennifer tonight. Um, I do believe that we've got guests coming on. We, we kind of took a week off uh, with the guests because um, Lance was going to be gone and um, Justin's gone. So um, we just kind of had, you know, a, a podcast where we could come in, answer questions, talk to everybody. Um, but we will have guests coming on next week and progressively after that. I think next week one is Myron Briley. Am I correct about that? Yes. Amazing guy. Yep. Myron and Myron and his wife, man, they're they're just doing crazy good with the wholesaling business right now. I, you know more about it than I do, yeah. one. But yeah, they're they're killing it right now. They're actually hosting a. Um, uh, um, uh, what do they call it? 100K uh, July. So they've been going live every single day, working with people on uh, on basically helping them, you know, either get deals under contract or dispo. So they've been they've been just killing it. Yeah, and I do believe he's hit that mark, man. He's got from what I heard, ten contracts or thirteen contracts, like they're, they're under yeah. contract. Just, That's you know, awesome. So yeah, he's killing it, man. Under 130k for the month, uh, you know, do, doing doing great, and uh, he's got a really fantastic system of the way that he goes about that. So I do believe, if I'm correct, Myron Briley will be on next week talking That's about correct. how he puts that whole system together um, and what he's doing. So, um, and then I'm going to be bringing um, some more guests in terms of business buying um, guys. If you're not there on small business buying, we got to get you there. Um, it, it, it's just, it's an opportunity that's passing you by. Uh, if you're not out there <clears throat> looking at acquiring uh, strong businesses from these baby boomers that are, you know, starting to retire and they just have no exit strategy. Uh, we come in and buy businesses between a million and $10 million valuation um, with little to no money down. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be bringing some content there, um, and yeah, we're we're just going to have some amazing guests coming on uh, here here uh, coming up. So, anyways, guys, I so happy to everybody that came, and we really appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we'll be we'll we'll be here same bat time, same bat channel next week on Thursday at 6 p.m. CST. Talk to everybody That's right. soon. Cool, appreciate it, guys. Everybody right. next week. Thanks, All right, Thanks. bye, bye, bye.